he clearly sorry someone just pulled into my driveway um we're good they just is it a they, kicker maybe yeah. it's a kicker go find out if he can kick michael that was good <laughs> We'll start with this question from Robin. So there's still a damn good defense. I have zero problem with them bringing this guy in. All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel presented by Connors and Ferris, Mike Catalana. I am Jenna Cottrell, Dan Fates with a veteran day off. See, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We're here with the latest installment of You Ask, We Answer, presented by Stellar Roofing, Windows, and Siding. All right, Mike, you are back from Baltimore. It was quite a uh, trip down mm -hmm. to Maryland. Um, a couple of questions that we have, and we have some really good ones. The first one I want to start with is from Jacob Scholaber. The run defense was shredded against Baltimore. Was this a testament to Derrick Henry's greatness or how poor slash banged up the Bills run defense is? Either way, four and one, a fine way to start the season. Okay, so we're counting a win then against the Texans <laughs> if they get to four and one. That's true. Yes, Wait, what they I want. didn't even realize. Uh, I, I don't want to hedge and say a little bit of both. Derrick Henry's a hell of a player. The Ravens had a great game plan. They attacked, they blocked extremely well in the run game. And then when he got a head of steam, he was great. Is it better if Bernard's out there and Taron Johnson? Absolutely. Will that help if they're back this week? There's no question. I don't want to dismiss it though. You know, it is just one loss and the bills don't ever get blown out. And the Ravens are a running team and all those things. It did concern me, Jenna, watching the game that a physical team was a bit of a mismatch for the Bills. Mm -hmm. And I know it can get better, but I'm talking about up front on that defensive line. And all those guys were there, and they did not play yeah. great. So, yes, it's Der everybody's not Derrick Henry. It's funny. I don't know. There was a question at the end of the news conference on, on Sunday night, and somebody asked about, basically, how did Derrick Henry have this game against you guys and the plan? And Sean answered it very well. And then at one point he's like, eh, it's a Derrick Henry. <laughs> like it is yeah. Derrick Henry. The yeah. guy's is a first ballot hall of famer and he can put up numbers and he's got it. So it's him. It's a lack of their first level mm -hmm. defenders in those yeah. spots. And maybe that changes, but I don't know if you feel the same way, Jenna, it, it's not a hundred percent that like if they played again this week, I think it would be better, but I don't know if, 100% because that D line's got to be better. Well, I, I read the question and I was like, two things can be true. Yes. The bills absolutely have weaknesses, especially you talk about linebacker, but also Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones were essentially a non-factor in this game. And then you have someone like Derek Henry, who is a future hall of famer. And if anyone's going to exploit the fact that there were weaknesses and no pressure yeah. in that defensive line, the bad tackling, the, you know, the, the mismatch that it was, it would be Derrick Henry. So I think for me, it's a situation of, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. And they do miss, they miss, of course you're going to miss Terrell Bernard. And of course yeah. you're going to miss Taron Johnson. And obviously they've been without Matt Milano, but sometimes it really puts into perspective, you know, that you know, Bale Inspector and Dorian Williams are playing well for them. Cam Lewis is playing well for them, but, and I don't mean to talk bad about those guys, but there's an obvious step, up yeah. to the players that they are, you know, filling in for. That's a great point. Uh, Dan and I were talking after the game and, and we were talking about backup players. And I believe the bills have a high expectation for their backups. Like that's totally. the culture. You got to be ready to play. But there's also a realistic thought. Bale inspector is not Terrell Bernard. Cam Lewis is not Taron Johnson. They don't expect them to be those guys. They expect them to know their assignments, play well, be prepared, all those things. But there's a reason they are backups in the game Correct. and not the starters, right? So Yeah, so, and, and and that's yeah. the reality of the situation, yep. not not being shady. It's just that is that there there's a reason why there was another guy starting before them. And so yep. when that guy is out, I think they've done a really great job. But I think on Sunday you really saw that those other players were missing. Now, I wanted to mention, Jenna, because I just got done, and you'll see it posted later, um, uh, interview with Seth Payne, former NFL player, works in mm -hmm. Houston. So I'm at Joe Mixon. 
And Mixon looked really good early. He got banged up. They think he's going to be back. While you're watching this, maybe it's already been announced whether he's playing or not. But Mixon is a horse. And he's not hes not Derrick Henry, but he can run. And they really feel like they need to run the football to help mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud in the passing game. So if Mixon's playing, they get Stroud under center sometimes, and they will run the ball right at you. So that could be a big test. Uh, maybe not to the Henry level, but pretty close. Yeah, that's something that is concerning because, like, you – you can run on the bill. Like that yep. is something that they have struggled. Their run defense has not been as stout as obviously the passing defense. So that definitely is a concern, especially when you have another guy that can make plays with his legs and CJ, CJ Stroud and what that does for the offense for the mm -hmm. Texans. All right. Next question. Um, Tom Gil, I'm so bad at pronouncing stuff. So if I, if I say your name wrong, I really do apologize. Um, I feel like I can say this because my name is constantly said wrong that I'm, I'm sorry. Um, all right. At Tom Gilotti, uh, okay. panic meter one to 10 question mark. So let's say one, not panic 10. Oh my goodness. A uh, panic meter. Mm -hmm. I have it on about three. That's okay. We're in lockstep. Not yeah, shocking. Three on Dan the would probably meter. be like a zero. Yeah. Or like a Dan would either be a zero or nine. <laughs> there is an old saying, you know, in the NFL, it's win or panic. And you can see it already. Like it doesn't matter the team. Like when you lose, you the initial falling. visceral feeling is this they stink, coach stinks, the players stink, blah, blah, blah get rid of this guy, that guy. And if that happens to us against Baltimore, what's going to happen? It's that game in that week against the Ravens. And the Ravens were really good. Credit to them. Credit to the Ravens. I think somebody had that in the comment That's this good. week. Credit to the Ravens. They were great. I think if they played again in Baltimore Sunday, it would be a different game. I'm, I'm not sure if the Bills would win, but it would be a different game. Um, but panic meter? I'll say this up front, Jenna, and I think we've talked about it during the year with these three games in a row. If you told me right now, and maybe you don't want to hear this, Bills fans, they lose to the Texans, they beat the Jets, I'd take it. I'd take it at four and two with a win against the Jets. I mean, going into the season, yes, I would take that as well. I feel like Sean McDermott does not really lose back-to-back -back games. And I think for personal reasons, this game is very important for yeah. some of the guys on the team. Um, Which guys on the team? <laughs> um, I would say my panic meter is also at three. Yeah. Because of, it's just a weird game. Like the Bills got blown out of the gym and that doesn't normally happen. As Brandon Bean tells us. Yes, which I hate that phrase, but a run out of the gym, whatever. Yeah. Um, when was the yeah, last time they were it, blown out? It was the Colts three years ago. It was four, which they got run on. They got run on in that game too. Again, I'll reference Seth Payne. I just, he was a defensive lineman in the NFL. Look, I'm promoting the video that we just did. Uh, he talked about it, what it's like. He, he actually joked about, uh, testosterone levels of players before and after a team runs all over you, <laughs> which is pretty funny. It just, it does take a lot physically out of a team when that happens. Now, I don't anticipate that's what the Texans could do to the Bills. Mm -hmm. Could they run them out of the gym with their passing game? Sure, that can happen too. Then the panic might, meter might go up a little bit more. If two weeks in a row they don't look good and they lose against the two best teams that they've played so far, but let's hold off on that till after. After this game, I, I think we both think panic meter, you're three and one. You had one bad night. Let's see yeah. what happens. Yeah. I feel like this game is an anomaly at this point because even in losses, the Bills, what was it, like 40 plus 43. in a row that were yeah. six points or less. So at this point, I'm not willing to to bang the gavel and say, oh my gosh, this is this is awful and the sky is falling. That being said, Freshly fried, our next question. How concerned are we about Bass now? I have no faith in him when he lines up. I honestly think that's a pretty 
valid statement of it feels at some points, Mike, like it's a coin flip. Yeah, I, I, that's all I would say to people. Just what you said. Do you have faith? When he was lining up for that kick, I, I mentioned this in our video Sunday, uh, Sunday night. I'm sitting next to Andy Young from Spectrum News, covers the Bills. I said, you have confidence he's going to make this? And he's like, nope. And then he missed it. It's a feeling that he's earned, right? Because yeah. he made the early one. I'm like, all right, that's encouraging. Boomed it through. We're talking about 40 some odd yard field goals. 48 yards, I believe. Yeah. And it wasn't close. And and he's had those that, I mean, the, the Kansas City game was a tying field goal, huge yeah. pressure, and he missed it. But these other ones, Jenna, have enough pressure that it's like, okay, this means something. Like, like in the Pittsburgh playoff game last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at, at times when you just say, let's see how he does. And those have not been good. And uh, they have Kami Fairburn of uh, for the Texans who come into this game. He's eight of nine. He's made a 59-yarder this year. He's been really good. He's made everything else. Mm -hmm. It's on that check mark. The Bills go into most of these games at the moment. The other team's kickers getting the check mark. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's totally fair. Yeah. They brought in a kicker or two kickers a couple weeks ago. What do you think it would take though for them to move on from Tyler Bass? That the right kicker comes in their building and they and they look at it and go, This guy could be our guy. Do you think though, if if this Texans game comes down to a kick and Bass misses, that that would be enough for them to be like, We can't, this is not our guy. As as long as they have somebody they really like. Yeah. I was thinking like that's North that's the other thing. Like yes, yeah, so it has to be somebody better and yeah. if you're looking at kickers. I don't think there's been many changes in the league this year. I, you know, um, someone could correct me if there is, you know, put it in the comments where somebody has made a move or there's been an injury with a kicker. Um so the guys who are out there that were mm -hmm. on the edge and had a chance to make teams and have shown something aren't on a roster now. So you don't want to wait too long because if there's somebody you have your eye on, and I know they brought in a couple of kickers and we're recording this on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That's the day they bring in players. I would not be stunned that there were kickers in there. Um, yeah. I said before about the practice squad and then you have that player ready. He's with your team. You get to look at him kicking. And then if something mm -hmm. happens, he's there and ready to go the next week. Yeah. Uh, I would say, Jenna, you know, Dan was saying kicking for his job before, and then he missed one. I think if it did came down, come down to that and they had somebody in mind, that's what it would take to move on from Bass. Yeah, I agree, because it's like he clearly – sorry, someone just pulled into my driveway. Um, we're good. They just, Is it a they, kicker? Maybe yeah. it's a kicker. <laughs> Go find out if he can kick. Michael, that was good. <laughs> That's good. Um, no, I, I just, I feel like it'll come down to a, because we've been talking, Mike, we've been talking this going into the Chiefs game. Do the Bills have a kicking problem? We've been talking, you and I, credit to us, we're talking about it for probably the last four or five weeks of last season. And yeah. then it ended up costing them, costing them in the playoff game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, regardless of what you think would have happened if he made the kick with a minute and change to go against Kansas city, he missed it. So it didn't yeah. matter. They didn't, it didn't matter. They won the game. Um, yeah, I think it's been a kicking problem since then. He got the whole off season to get himself ready. They had no competition for him during camp yeah. and he's not been, he's not been good. He certainly hasn't been great. And it is a league of, you know, it's yeah, you got to perform. It's 55 and above. Way. The best kickers are the ones who can make them above 55. Yeah. But 55 and below has become the, you know, Standard. 45 and below yeah. what it used to be. Yep. So I know we talked about this too. Where people, some people are like, you know, you shouldn't bring in another kicker. It can mess with his confidence and all this stuff. And I thought you brought up a good point earlier on of being like, if he can't handle that, then, then that is another serious thing point of like yeah. what wh how is he going to be in big game scenarios every other player on the roster within reason 
I mean, I, I don't think Josh is looking over his shoulder at Mitch Trubisky, right? There's certain, he's just not. There's certain yeah. players, they're playing. Yeah. Everybody else has a backup. Everybody has a backup. In the case of a kicker, they always know that there's guys out there. And when mm -hmm. a team makes that move, it's not like, we're going to give them a few snaps off here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. No, you're either the kicker or you're not. Mm -hmm. And that is pressure to begin with. Mm -hmm. I didn't love it that they didn't bring anybody in, but I, I understood it. It's like, okay, we've invested in this guy. He has been good before. We feel confident. And it it's just, and even his misses are bad. His misses are bad. And yeah. he wasn't great in practice. He wasn't great in camp. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you're Sean McDermott. You know, everybody wants to get on McDermott about decisions and do you punt and do you kick. And I get it. But at some point when you're at the 47 yard or 37 yard line, are you thinking we have a field goal here? 54 yarder? No way. Yeah. You're worried about it at the 27. Yeah. So that absolutely factors in. Yeah. A thousand percent. Okay. All right. Um, next question from Ricky Creffield, Cryfield 5088. Do you think we need a wide receiver one? Yes. In the simple answer, yes. I think he makes a wide receiver one. Perfect scenario, wide receiver one. You're going to see Nico Collins this week. You get a guy like that, you know, if uh, if the Dolphins, who are in a free fall, want to send you Waddle in a trade, mm -hmm. making wide receiver one on this team, boy, he makes – everybody else better in my opinion i think in a lot of people's opinion because you're playing your more natural position you're a hockey fan you got a guy who's a really good second line center if he's your number one guy it's tough he's going against yeah. the number one defensive pairing and all those mm -hmm. things you know he's not your number one starter on a baseball team it's great if he's your two and your three you know we are big fans of shakir he's a really good player He's a long way from being what the league would consider a number one guy. A long way. He's away from that. He's not that at this but point. But you give him a number one guy in the front, you know? Yeah. And that now with Coleman, now mm -hmm. with Shakir. And then we're where when you look at when you look at a player um, you know, who can be a productive player on the team, but not be a, you know, a starter. Yeah. Um then you say, because we have a number one guy. It's it's in, interesting. Hold on. I'll throw this in the bin here because uh, I said it's interesting. <laughs> Drop it in the bin. Uh, that all these rumors or at least projections are out there. Who the Chiefs want to get as a number one guy because they lost Rasheed Rice. Mm -hmm. And you see all these names and it's like, okay. I mean, I'd take Amari Cooper on this team. Yeah. And he's been around the league a little bit, but he still can make plays. And Cleveland's a dumpster fire. So there are players yeah. out there. When you see all those names listed with the Chiefs, you could see them with the Bills. I don't know, Jenna. Does Bean give up assets this year if somebody is available to make a move? I mean, I, I think yes. I mean, my like Shakir's ankle injury is something that, is concerning to me. Mm -hmm. Sean McDermott said on Monday that Shakir is very sore. They're taking it essentially day by day to see how he, you know, goes through the week, how he's feeling. But obviously we have seen how impactful that ankle can be with making cuts and just being able to be a proficient route runner and all those things where I think Shakir is a really good player. I picked him to be the bills leader in yards this season, mm -hmm. but I credit to you. Credit to me. Yeah. I, I just worry about what that injury will do to hamper his ability. And when you look around after that, you see a Keon Coleman that made a nice couple catches down the stretch yep. to kind of redeem himself after that bad drop. Uh, Mac Collins, who special teams contributor had some nice catches, but again, like is not that guy. He's Chris the five, Samuel, right? Huh? Mac Collins ideally is just your fifth guy. Yeah, absolutely. And like, get some snaps can play in the run game. It's mm -hmm. almost like have he he is a good blocker. He is, yeah. But very his, true. Yeah, yeah. But it's like Curtis Samuel has not been what we have thought he has been would mm -hmm. be through four games of the season. MVS has been essentially invisible. 
Um, you have Dalton Kincaid, who's are who's played well, but and Dawson not like it's just the phrase everybody eats. I asked Dan last week, like, is that sustainable? And he's like, honestly, I I don't know. We'll see. And I think that everybody eats doesn't mean that everybody's getting the ball every game. It just means that a, a different, maybe a different game, one guy is stepping up. And that's great yeah. in theory. But sometimes you just need someone to be better than the person they're standing in front of. And so it comes with nuance because everything does. But yeah, would this team benefit from a wide receiver one? Absolutely. And you look at some of those names you talked about that are available and that or could be a trade offer or something. Right. If I'm being, I'm saying, you know what? We'll see how this next stretch goes because Houston's a tough game. The Jets is a tough game, right. but I would absolutely have it on the table for, okay, maybe we need to do more and get someone else in to help also lift up the other guys too. The saying, yeah. a rising tide lifts all boats, especially when it's a wide receiver one. And when you look at the AFC, I mean, the Chiefs are 4-0. and They won them all. All close, but they find ways to win. Mm -hmm. But they are banged up. Yeah. The Bengals have struggled. The teams are... The Jets do not appear to be great. You know, they have their moments, but they're, you know... They struggled against the Broncos. Right. Yeah. The Dolphins are in free fall. Like, you yeah. look around, and the Texans are good. They've had their own issues. I'm going to say... You can't ever say it's wide open. It's the Chiefs conference to win obviously but they are banged up i know this is a transition year in some way for the bills but come on if you if you go get a couple of wins here you find yourself in a great spot and you say fuck it we're <laughs> yes sorry i'll bleep that but seriously oh. this is this is you're right you yeah. might have more of an opportunity that you were even expecting yeah. Like you can pick apart every team and be like, well, they got this or this is like, especially it, if the bills defense is gets their guys back healthy. I mean, Milano comes back yeah. all those things. You could be looking for a wide receiver. You could be looking for a pass rusher. Yeah. I mean, these are all things that are on the table and I know you have draft picks and you don't want to go giving them away, but you have a good team that, mm -hmm. that has some needs. And if you're in the right position, I, I would say, yeah. And I'd say yes, because if they don't get one now or they don't feel like they, they do, they do feel like they need better players. I mean, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the Texans and I'm seeing, you know, Tank Dell yeah. and Stefan Diggs mm -hmm. as the guys behind Collins. They get the ball, but there's no question that kid is the number one receiver on that team. I mean, yeah. he's, I mean, he's really good. He's the number one. He's the number one guy, and still other players get the ball. I mean, Diggs has 25 catches. How many did he have last game? I only uh, thought he had like one or two. He, he, I don't know what his total is, but his, he's got 25 I mean, catches and 33 they targets. They almost lost to Jacksonville, too. Yes. Uh, Nico Collins has 30 catches, 25 for first down, and two touchdowns. Dang. So 27 of his 30 catches have been for a first down or touchdown. It's averaging 16.3 yards a catch. That's pretty good. Oh my God. Yeah. He's got 489 yards in four games. That's, that's Dang really good. Him. That's 122. He's yards. averaging what? 16, 16.3 yards per 122 yards a game average. That's so he's, wild. he's really good. My point yeah. being, he's a number one. Yes. And the other guys are good. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. So the possible needs for the Bills. Our next question. At Himothy Himothy, MB8DC. <laughs> Mike, do you think the safety position is a real concern? Would Edwards and Bishop make a difference over Rapp and Hamlin? We saw, so just to update everyone in case they did not see, on Monday, Sean McDermott said that Taylor Rapp is still in concussion protocol. So, unclear what that will be like for him and getting out and when he will next be playing. So Cole Bishop went into the game on Sunday. DeMar Hamlin obviously starting as well. Mike Edwards was inactive for the second straight week on Sunday. So Mike, this is not nothing. <laughs> no. And I, I wonder, I mean, Mike Edwards inactive. For the second straight week. And I don't know if it's because they don't feel like he can be a special teams guy. Cause if you're a backup safety, 
Um, you have to play teams, which would be odd. I mean, most safeties, I think, are, you know, prone to be able, prone, should be skilled to be able to play special teams. He's been a guy who's played and started on Super Bowl winners, at least at moments. Um, I would think he's active for this week. It It is, it is telling. I know what they want out of some of these guys, uh, but they obviously did not have confidence in Mike Edwards to have him on the field. I know he came off that hamstring, but I think he's going to need to be um, out there. But I don't know. What do you think in terms of higher level of play? I mean, I don't, I don't believe that we're going to see uh, Taylor Rapp this week. So then what do you do? Yeah, because Cole Bishop is <clears throat> understandably green. And if Mike Edwards, if you had Cole Bishop active over Mike Edwards, you make the caveat about special teams. But yeah. he is someone that has not had a lot of time on the field. Do you call no. Micah? Is it still too early for Micah? I think Sean got asked that, right, again, about Micah Hyde. And I think his answer was like, we, you know, you know, we feel about Micah. We always keep in touch. I don't know. I mean, I had somebody say to me, they should sign Micah Hyde. I'm like, it's Micah Hyde's decision whether he plays or not. Yeah, also that. It wasn't yeah. like they He's said. San Diego out. right now enjoying life. I saw Jordan Poyer get hurt last night. Um, oh, I didn't see that. He's not, not playing well. He got injured. I, I, I'm i trying to remember what it was. It was, I think it was maybe a hip, something that he got hurt. Um, you know, he's. That game was hard to watch. That's a rough, that's a rough time. And they got Tyreek yelling on the side, shin. Yeah. They got Tyreek yelling on the sidelines. I did see that Tua's, they think he could be back soon, but it's rough there. So uh, yeah. I only brought him up because obviously it's, it was Poyer and Hyde. Mike is out in San Diego. Like if he wanted to be back, would they make a phone call? Mm -hmm. If they, I think there's been communication. I think yeah. if they were sensing he's close, like he thinks he wants to, I think they yeah, but put even a little that, bit of a push on. It's so you would be a couple weeks, I feel like, of like Yeah. I feel like much. you I mean, maybe they would pull an AJ Klein and just like, hey, you were on vacation and now you're starting, but yeah. Well, in that case, they had no real choice because it was the playoffs. But it even now, like it let's just pretend they call Micah Hyde. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to put something under this. I'm just making this up. They call Micah Hyde. He says he wants to play. Comes into Buffalo. He's at practice, you know, for a few days. I don't believe he plays on Sunday, but I actually yeah. think he could. I, I actually think he could. I think his knowledge of the defense and what they would expect out of him, I think he could get off the couch and be on the field and play the way they would like him to. It's going to take him a little while just because mm – -hmm. You know, you, you haven't played any football, yeah. but it might be it might be pretty sore getting up on, you know, Monday morning. But I think he could. I think if you were to bring in a guy like that with his skill level and his experience, I think you would give him a little bit of time to get acclimated, but not much. I think yeah. if he was ready, they'd get him on the field. Yeah. How OK. How concerned are you about the safety position? I, I'm I'm concerned. I think it already was at strong backup level. Mm -hmm. and that's the way I think of DeMar. I think of him as a backup player. I, it's judged as a starter. They didn't bring him back or have him on the team as a starter. He's been a starter due to injury. I do believe they signed Mike Edwards to be a starter, and mm -hmm. they drafted Cole Bishop to eventually be a starter. They mm -hmm. like Taylor Rapp on the other side. I think Taylor Rapp is a good football player. I, I, I think they're... Safety position now is a net neutral on a good day. It's just they're they're good football players, but yeah. they're not exceptional, and they can be picked on. This is what the rest of the world lived for over the past how many years? Well, that's when what I'm saying. Too, and like, Hyde in their prime. You had one of the best safety duos. Yeah. In a long, long time that like anything was going to be a step down. But also the fact that I agree with you. I think they brought in Mike Edwards to be the guy. The injuries kept him sidelines. Demar had a nice camp, and like Demar has had nice moments. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to take away from that. But you're right. I think they viewed him as, okay, this guy will be 
a backup plus. And he's obviously got a ton of ton more play than I think any of us other than Dan was expecting. Um, but with the rap concussion, it makes the numbers thin. And yeah. Cole Bishop is a rookie and not a lot of experience and exposure. And you're asking him to take a big step up in weight class. So yeah. Yeah. What yeah, they do with Mike Edwards will be very interesting this week yeah. how they approach that. Yep. All right. Anything else you want to uh you want to add? No, I, I just think this is a it's a strange week for them coming off a big loss um hopeful to get those guys back on the field i mean as if bernard and taryn are back on the field we talk about that middle of the defense yeah and just how good they are they are plus plus players we i think we agree that i think the two most impactful players on their defense they're playing yeah. without both of them but they need more out of the d-line this week um yeah that's not a great O line for the Texans, and they've been concerned about it. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, they did spread it out a little bit more, and I think they feel a little better about their O line that they feel like they can spread it out. Yeah. But if they get Mixon, that would be big for them. So if you can get Taron Johnson back on the field, and especially Terrell Bernard on the field, and then and then play more of your regular defense. And just expect more. I mean, Von Miller did absolutely nothing in the game. Someone was like, snaps. was he on the field? I was like, yeah, his snaps were question. not. I give Baltimore credit, though. The ball came out. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Baltimore Lamar played, played very well. Lamar I played a think... very solid game, and he was special with the ball in his hands on a few mm -hmm. of the runs. He's he, great at the RPO. He looked like the two-time MVP. Yeah, his numbers were were good. But that that, to me, I said he played like Josh did against the Dolphins. Okay. Yeah, that's right? fair. You yeah, you could he played make some nice moments, but yeah, it was moments, all about the run but game. wasn't great. And by the way, I got laughing because I had someone come up to me today and say, Oh my God, I was watching whatever show, whatever hot takers were talking about. And their big point was uh in one of these shows that Lamar showed Josh what an MVP plays like. And I'm like, man, it doesn't take long, right? Josh is the MVP favorite. And Lamar has a good game. Derrick yeah. Henry runs all over them. Their defense plays well, but that's the hot takers of the world. Oh, you know, yeah. Lamar was good. Yeah, Lamar's he a good, would. really good football player. But I think Josh would be fine. In terms of Terrell Bernard and Taron yeah. Johnson, I my expectation and speculation wise is I feel like Bernard will be back this weekend, and I think that Taron will be back for Monday night. That's could, just kind you of, could be right. Yeah. Uh, Bernard was back to practice last week as a limited participant, but still that seems ahead of the, of yeah. the curve in terms of him coming back before Taron Johnson. I know they didn't put Taron Johnson on IR, but at the same point, I think maybe they're kind of maybe, maybe a different injury. Maybe it's a different timeline. So yeah. There's that. Well, listen, you took a chance in terms of the four weeks that you would lose the player. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't, at that point, once you've made that decision, if he's not ready and they don't think he's ready, you don't need another issue. If it yeah. means another week, it means another week. So, yeah. so we'll see. We'll see. We'll be at practice. So we'll see what, what goes on this week and then yes. getting ready for Houston. Okay. I'm going to eat lunch. I'm very hungry. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. You ask, we answer presented by stellar roofing windows and siding for Mike Catalana. I am Jenna Cottrell, Dan Fates with a veteran day off. Please be sure to like comment and subscribe. We'll catch you next time here on the Buffalo plus channel. We'll start with this question from Robin. So there's still a damn good defense. I have zero problem with them bringing this guy in.